Sir, do you think we're close to figuring out how to live forever? No, I don't think we are. Um, I think the first goal is not live forever. There's a lot of hype around anti-aging, and nobody's discovered if there is an age, inbuilt aging limit. So half the people in aging would say about 120 years is maximum human lifespan. Uh, but what is very practical to do and a lot of people working on is how you not, don't worry about extending lifespan, expand, extend uh, health span. So at 70, somebody should feel like they do a uh, 40-year-old. They don't get, you know, if you look at Alzheimer's, if you look at diabetes, you look at cardiac disease, uh, they are all diseases of aging. The probability of the disease goes up as you age. And if you can make it where people don't get those diseases, so the lifespan they have is all healthy. Uh, that's the first goal of anti-aging therapies. It's to delay the onset of chronic diseases. Chronic diseases are the most expensive diseases in healthcare. They also afflict many more people than individual things. And solving, avoiding those diseases by changing the probability uh, is very, very possible in the next 10, 15 years, in my view. And that's a very good first goal to shoot for instead of this dream of Larry Ellison wants to live forever. Is there, is there, are there any things that you follow that have been, uh, that have held you in a good stead that, that you would recommend to folks who are especially entrepreneurs, high performance individuals, um, you know, who are career focused? Well, there's a lot of literature on staying healthy longer and avoiding disease. So as you know, with my Indian genetics, and my family was very prone to diabetes. My, my doctor told me when uh, about 27 years ago, after I, before I turned 40, I'd been on insulin within uh, two or three years. I'm still not on insulin at age 67. And my A1C, which is a measure of diabetes, is lower than it was at age 40. I've oh, been wow. able to reverse it through management. Uh, aggressive management. And I think you can do that. Uh, anybody can do that. These things are available. There's lots of literature and I highly recommend people go on the web. I don't want to give any medical advice to anybody. That'd be illegal, but lots of options available. What you said sets up for the question we had here, which is first, do no harm is bad policy. Medicine does not teach doctors risk reward trade offs mathematically. Rapamycin is a no brainer beyond a certain age based on the health status of the patient. Can we double, double click on that and talk more yeah. about So, rapamycin is a drug that's approved for organ transplants to suppress the immune system, right, at a particular dosage. At very low dosage, rapamycin does a few things. One of the causes of aging, uh, so there's a couple of mechanisms of aging, autophagy, senescence, a um, couple of things like that. Rapamycin addresses some of those things at low dosage, but we don't have 30 years of history of somebody taking it for 30 years. So, Somebody at 50, would I recommend rapamycin? Not at all. Somebody in their 70s, would I recommend rapamycin? It's an absolute no-brainer. In between, it depends on your risk profile and your family health status. Like if your father got Parkinson's, I'd take it at 60. Uh, if you didn't and there was no family history, then I'd treat it differently. So, this is a probability of harm and versus a probability of gain kind of equation. It's a expected value calculation for those of you who are more mathematically inclined. Now, statins in your 30s, especially with Indian genetics, makes a lot of sense. One, it's cheap, so it doesn't cost very much, especially since the genetic version, and you can even take it as supplements like red rice yeast is a statin, and you can take it as a supplement. You don't even need a prescription if your cholesterol is high or LDL is high. 
Should you start taking it in your 30s? Absolutely. Because it's been tested on over a billion people over a long period of time, many decades. Would I say the same about rapamycin? No. Uh, if, if I was 30 or 40, I'd wait for 20 years of results before I took rapamycin. But if I'm 75 and dealing with Alzheimer's, I'd be taking rapamycin aggressively. So th that's sort of mathematically how you compute. Doctors don't do that and drug approval processes. So, uh, you know, it's funny to me, every doctor, at least in the US, takes the Hippocratic Oath. I think it's true of doctors everywhere in the world. First, do no harm. And that's just mathematically incorrect. If you take a risk, and it has, take a new drug. If it kills 10 people but might save 1,000 lives per year, you should approve the drug. Today's regimen of first do no harm means the drug will never get approved because it killed 10 people. And societally, it's much better for society that we can save 1,000 lives or 990 lives. Uh, it's bad at the individual level, but you don't know which 10. <laughs> So that's a good example of this opinion. It's a very scientific opinion. It's first principles thinking.